Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you for joining. We are so delighted to have you in Sunday School today, the 17th day of September, 2023. And the lesson will be under the theme, God blesses Jacob, which was changed to Israel. We'll be looking at Genesis chapter 32, as well as chapter 35. But before we invite our teacher, Sister Paulette Morgan, to take us through the lesson, we're going to invite the presence of God in our midst to guide our deliberations, guide the discussions, um, and to give us proper, correct interpretation of his word. So may I invite you all to just bow your heads at this time when I ask Sister Simone Spalding to pray. Good night. Good evening, I should say. Good evening. Okay. Father God, we come before you another time, Lord God. Thank you for this privilege, Lord God, that we are gathered here today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the teachers, Lord God. Father God, you said lack of knowledge, the people perish. And Father God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. We can learn about your words, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for everything, Lord God, is to be said and done on this Zoom meeting, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Let it be a light onto our path, Lord God. Help us to take, oh God, these words, Lord, and apply to our everyday life. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity again, Lord God. Because a lot of people, Lord God, they're not hearing the word. But Lord God, we are so privileged, Lord God, that we can gather in this fashion. Father God, we thank you for everything that is to be about to say and done on this line, Lord God. Oh God, let it be edified to us, Lord God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 To God we give all the honor and all the glory. For all the students who are online, um, at this time, I just want to say welcome. May you be truly blessed, richly blessed by the lesson. And uh, let us make it interactive. When our teacher asks questions, let us try to respond so we can all learn together and be edified by the word. So may I invite you all to just put your hands together and welcome our teacher, Sister Paulette. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Um, greetings to our supervisors. I'm sure I heard Brother Jones' voice, no? Okay, no. So our supervisor, Sister Marva White, and um and all our wonderful Sunday school students. Um, I see any other teachers coming on yet, but to God be the glory. Yeah, just, oh, sister, sister, oh, Auntie Patty's here. Auntie Patty's here. Uh, and I'm seeing our bishop coming in. All in the to see him. when our, our bishop is in. Yeah, our bishop is in. Yes. So, right. So, and all those persons celebrating birthdays uh, and anniversaries. May God continue to bless and to keep you in perfect peace. And all the challenges that we are facing, we know that it's not going to be forever. And that just to remind us that we have no control over certain situations, but we are in control over the choices that we make. And that's what's going to break us or make us. Welcome to another adult class, Sunday School. And I, I do hope that you will try to make it interactive as much as possible. And um, this is a lesson or a story that we all know. 
we may have different version of it. But from school days, we have learned this story. But today's lesson is going to put it into a form that some of us may not have put it in before. And I trust that the words will reach our hearts and that when we should have left this Sunday school platform, we'll put it into practice and not just for ourselves. We're not going to be selfish about it. We are going to ensure that others learn as well as we are building the temple of the Lord. All right. So I promise that I'm not going to be too long. I'm just going to try to work within the time. And so let me share. So our topic today Um, okay, let me put it on our topic today. It's about Jacob. God blesses Jacob. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, and uh, I'm going to take my video off in a little while so that clarity will be better. And um, so I might not be able to see persons who would want to ask questions. So as usual, I know our supervisor is very good at that. So if I'm overlooking or seem as if I'm overlooking, please draw my attention to that, please. All right. Okay. So God blesses Jacob. And there is a name attached to Jacob. And some of us may be wondering, why that name? So we are going to learn why the, that name Israel is in brackets. And, okay, let me take this thing off. Okay. All right. Central truth. God patiently draws sinners to rep rep repentance and submission. Our focus this afternoon is observe that God blesses those who submit to him and resolve to serve him wholeheartedly. Evangelism emphasis, God patiently draws sinners to repentance and submission. Our focus text is taken from Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We can't go through our lives without acknowledging, acknowledging God as who he is, because he's in charge. And no matter how we think that we have it all under control, we don't. But God is. And sometimes we are doing things, and we carry on, and we can't, but... And we're having challenges. And when we think that we can't, just remember that God can. All right? So we're going to be looking at Isaac's blessings. Isaac, Isaac blessed Jacob. How did it happen? Now, when Isaac blessed Jacob, this is an indication that Jacob was now being the heir to the covenantal promise God made to Abraham. Even though Jacob gained this, 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 this blessing in a deceptive form, because Jacob was a deceiver, and we realize that Jacob tricked Esau and took his blessing, his birthright. 
right? And he, of course, Esau was very upset. And because of this wicked thing, he had to flee and become a fugitive, right? And become a fugitive. Jacob came to, well, he, he decided to go to his uncle. His uncle is, is called Laban, and he lived in Haran. Some of us will say Haran, right? During his first night as a fugitive, Jacob came to a, a, a deserted place. Right? So you're not fugitive, you're running from here, there, and everywhere. So he, he, he was at this deserted place and he was very, very tired. Can, you can just imagine running all over the place, you would have been tired and exhausted. So he fell asleep. During his sleep, the Lord God appeared unto him and promised him a future. Right? Promised him a future. And the promise was to bless Jacob with land, with descendants that cannot be numbered, and also to bless all the families of, of the earth through him. And guess what? All his descendants. All his descendants. So are you a descendant of, descendant of Jacob? This um this afternoon, do you consider yourself a descendant? Now, this is also similar to the promise that God made to Abraham, and with this, Jacob is the rightful heir of the covenant God made with Abraham. So he now will have to carry out or to be the one. That will the, the promise will be fulfilled in. Now, even though the, the promises are similar, even though the promises are similar, this promise to Jacob extended beyond, far beyond what was, was given to Abraham. So, um, this is not moving. So, let us look at the, the promises that was made. Um, I'm hold on. The screen is not moving. One moment, please. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Good. It just moved. Very good. So, God promised, one, his divine presence would accompany Jacob wherever he went. Number two, he would keep Jacob from danger. And number three, he would return Jacob to his own land. And four, he would fulfill the promises given to Jacob. Remember the promises I mentioned a while ago? So he would fulfill the promises given to Jacob. So after Jacob lived for, 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 for two decades, 20 years, so 20 years after he ran away from his homeland, now he will have to return to the land of his fathers and to his own kindred. But the Lord promised that he will be with him. So when you're looking at this direction, this directive from God, it should, it should remind us of the earlier promise to bring Jacob back to his family. Remember when he fell asleep, right? That promise was made to him and that was 20 years ago. And you can just imagine that Jacob will be sore afraid because he still feeling still feeling very guilty and he also knows that his brother is very furious and would want to have killed him for that wicked thing that he would have done but guess what on his journey home 
Jacob would have been face to face with his brother, Esau. And of course, he would have a very good reason to be afraid. So he had two divine encounters. He had two divine encounters. And have you ever had an encounter? Whether spiritual or temporal or, you know, physical. Two divine encounters and they're on screen. In the first encounter, the angels of God met him as he traveled from his uncle Laban. No. When you are when you have an encounter with a spiritual being, it will never ever be the same. Right? You'll never ever be the same. So this meeting with God's angels was abrupt, very quick and short, and unexpected and very surprising. Jake, Jacob was expecting this at all. And this presence this this encounter affected by his divine experience and guess what when you are when you have experienced a divine intervention a divine encounter i should say something will change and so what jacob did jacob saw this as memorable and J jacob named the place mahane what does that mean? Two camps. Okay, let us carry on. So the second encounter occurred when Jacob wrestled with a male figure whom he later identified as God, God himself. So after his first encounter with the, the group of angels, what would Jacob have done? Jacob prayed. And I'm sure if we have an encounter, we're going to get down, we're going to be praying and we're going to be worshiping God based on the encounter. So Jacob prayed for deliverance from Esau. And of course, while he had a second, but while he had secured his father's blessing, through theft, right? Trickery. The wrestling match had shown that Jacob, Jacob, that only God could bestow the blessing. And the 20 years of servitude, 20 years, you know, working for Laban would have taught him that he must depend solely on God for provision. God has made a promise to him at Bethel. But he, he, as a man, you know, Jesus was God and man. Jacob was just man and not God. And so human being, the human part of what would have chipped in and said, me here, God say more to this, but he's a, a dangerous man. So, but he prayed after the encounter. He prayed. And in the second encounter, he encountered an angel, a male spiritual being. He didn't know it was God at the moment, but he later learned that it was God. So to prepare for this meeting with his brother, Jacob thought of other things that he would have done. So you know what? Boy, I mean, I left up to God, you know. That's what we would have thought, right? So he prepared lovely gifts expensive and you know important gifts for his brother and that would be livestock and you know all stuff like that to, to gain favor from him it didn't stop there he carefully planned the order in which his family would have would have met esau so during the night jacob sends his wives his children and his remaining possessions across the book of Jabbok. He, he never got it, you know. 
because he thought that, okay, fine, sending all these things, that will soften up my brother a little bit and he would be more receptive of my presence and he would have pulled down and, you know, and also to delay that meet. Have you ever been in a situation where you, you know you have to go meet somebody or you know you have to do something and you do everything in your power to delay, to delay, to delay, to buy more time, to deal with all your emotions, right? And all the butterflies and whatever would have and the nervousness and so on. So in this lesson, we are going to realize that there are certain events that we should explore that occurred approximately two decades, 20 years after Jacob left his father's home. So as we study these events, we must bear in mind the initial promise God made to Jacob in Genesis 28, verse 15, in which I mentioned earlier. So look at this. Look at, look at Jacob. I try to wrestle with God. Hmm? That's Jacob wrestling with God. That's a, I mean, that's not a picture that we think is really reflective of God, but this is a little thing that we can understand wrestling. There is a, a struggle. There is a war going on in there. And you can see the determination. If we're going to look at this picture properly, we're going to see strength and we're going to see perseverance. So jo Jacob wrestles with God and on an unexpected encounter. That's Genesis 32, verse 21 to 26. And a new identity, 32, 27 to 32. We don't have time to read all the scriptures. So I'm going to ask you, please, you will have your Bibles with you and to further read the scriptures this afternoon. Not all the scriptures will be read. And Jacob was left alone and there rested a man with him until, that is verse 24, unto the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he, as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Beautiful scripture. Let's go in. Now, Listen to the Savior. He will show you the face of God, the good father. This is what Clement of Alexandria said. Now, having sent all his family and servants ahead of him, Jacob was left all alone when a man wrestled with, with him until dawn. Now, he see this man as a stranger who wrestled with him and he later recognized that, you know what? A God, you know, that was God. Why did God wrestle with Jacob? And why would God not defeat Jacob in this wrestling match? Now, to consider these questions, we must realize that God would have initiated this personal encounter. God is very strategic in whatever he does. All right, so he would have first initiated this personal encounter with Jacob, and this fact suggests that God desired to reveal himself in a fresh and new way to Jacob. Jacob would have seen him in other ways, but this time he wanted Jacob to experience him in a different way. When last have we experienced God in a, in a different way? No, I'm going to open up this for you to respond. Can you experience, can you ex, um, share with us a time when you have held on to Christ until he has, he has, you have experienced the, 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 the spiritual encounter with him? Anybody? Okay, I want to share. Um, many years ago when I just got saved, um, as a teenager, I remember one night we had, um, it was what we call tarrying for the Holy Spirit, you know, and I was at the altar and I was there praying 
and I don't know, I just, this, a, a determination came over me. I said, God, I'm not leaving this altar until you baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Even if it means I'm going to stay here for the next three days, but mm -hmm. I'm not to leave. And it was a special supernatural determination that I had, you know, where I held out that I was not going to leave this altar until God blessed me. And he did, you know, I was filled with the Holy Spirit um, approximately a year after I got saved. But I, I'll never forget, you know, that particular experience. Amen. It was like a wrestle, you know, um, but I made up my mind. Thank God, you went after God bless me. <laughs> and he did. Amen. Thank you so very much for sharing. All right. That's a very good example of you wrestling with God. Okay. All right. So the question may be asked, so why why God have to touch him, hurt him, you know, dislocate him, hips and all him something? Why did he just bless him and God? But sometimes things happen for us to have a testimony. So we can share to say, you know what? You know why I walk like this? God, me wrestle with you know. You know why my knee look like this? Because me go down for my knee and have an encounter, you know. You know why this car is on me? Whether it's a physical or a emotional or whatever, we we have something to tell a story. So if God had not wounded him. Jacob would not have been able to testify of God's saving power. God's encounter with Jacob was a transform transformative one. Transformed um, Jacob. That's an experience for such a deceiver. Remember, Jacob was a deceiver. So he was transformed. Thus, he received a new name. When you have had an encounter with God, you cannot be the same. Something has to go. Something has to cut. So you have to cut off some things. Some things has to be. Some things will have to be changed. Something has to go. So in verse twenty-six, Jacob demanded a blessing from the stranger, and. The straight because of his perseverance, that moment of of distress, that moment of uncertainty, that moment when you know I can't go on until something good happen, then you get a breakthrough. So Jacob's perseverance teaches us that in moments of distress. We must cling to the, to the promises of God. His promise sustain. His promise re-in reinvigorate. His promise will produce hope. So when you persevere, when you fight and you hold on, you will experience the blessing and the power of God. So his name was changed. Let us look at the new identity. Jacob's identity was changed. Genesis 32, verse 27 to 32. I'm looking at the, 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 the last verse 30. And Jacob called the, the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. We need to get on our move. We need to fight so that at the end of it, we can significantly change something. We can get up and say, well, you know what? You know why this is called this? Because this is what happened. This is why I trusted the Lord. This is why I persevered. And this is the result. Amen. So the result, the result of God's wrestling match 
with Jacob is a new name and thereby a new identity for the deceiver. No longer will he be called Jacob. But guess what? He is going to be called Israel. No, he's not going to be called the name deceiver because Jacob means deceiver. He's not going to be called the deceiver because if you are going to be carrying out the, the promises of God, you can't have the name there. What is in a name? If you have a name which is which is causing curse on you, when you have when you have made an encounter, when with, with you know when you have an, a spiritual encounter, something will have, will have to change. You will get a new name, a new vision, a new purpose. Amen. All right. So are we are we clear so far? Are we there? Yes, we are. Wonderful. So his name is now changed from Jacob to Israel. What does Israel mean? God struggles. God rules. God preserves. God protects. God is in charge. God takes care. Regardless of the, 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 the meaning of other things that you'll hear. He's no longer Jacob. So even though some persons will call him Jacob, he's no longer a deceiver. No, he, he is Israel because he has seen God face to face. And his life has been preserved from death. Are we, are we coming from a family where there is a curse coming down? And no matter what you do, you're still experiencing the curse with what we can do. Fight for your life. Fight so that your life can be preserved from death. And we know what to do. We need to get on our knees. And it doesn't have to be literal knees. So if your knee is not working, it is signify, it's signifying that we bow down, we humbly pray to the Lord God Almighty and to be consistent in prayer, to be honest to ourselves and to be genuine and pray for our deliverance. So Jacob demands a blessing, as we mentioned before, and God blesses him. Jacob meets God face to face, and this saved him from death. He receives a new name, and he's touched by God. When you are touched by God, it's going to be long lasting. It's going to be something that you don't even expect. You don't, you don't, you don't know what is going to happen, but the touch is a touch that he, he, he thinks will, will take care of you. And as I said before, God is strategic in, in everything that he does. He's in control. He knows it tomorrow. We don't know tomorrow. We know today. We know yesterday, but we don't know tomorrow. God is in charge of tomorrow. Now, what happened with this limp that he has? Because he walks with a limp now. To commemorate the encounter. To remember the encounter. To testify about the encounter. Jacob names the place where God rested with him. Peniel. Which means the face of God. So the naming of the place signals Jacob's new revelatory knowledge of God. The God of Abraham and Isaac is the God who rescues from death. So no matter what we are going through today, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel is here to rescue every one of us from our struggles, from our situations. So you see that night-long wrestling match with God? This will lead to reconciliation. Just like the, the, that night-long wrestling match with God leads to the reconcil reconciliation of Jacob and Esau. So even though Jacob was so afraid of Esau, because of that blessing, he, he was okay. Because Jacob would have been ready now to meet him. And Esau would have changed 
his, 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 his story and be more receptive of him. When God is in control, no matter what things are, things can change because God is a, is a changer. God is a game changer. God who, who is a God who will put things straight. Even when you think it's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No, no one, this can't work. God is in charge. Just declare the Almighty God as Lord over our lives and meet him. Meet him at the altar. Tell him all of the situation. Tell him all of your trials, your, your struggles, and how you want to change. And when you have experienced that spiritualness, then guess what? You will be changed. And your name will be changed. So listen to the Savior. He will show you the face of God, the good Father. We're going to look to the second, the other part. Any questions so far before I jump on? Before we go to the second part of the lesson, Jacob submits to God. All right. I have a question here. Describe your personal Bethel. A play, and of course, Bethel is a place God ministered to you in a special way. So describe your, your personal Bethel. You, do you have a personal Bethel? Anybody? Good night. Good night, Good night Bishop. I'm dynamic teacher and uh, class. Uh -huh. I, I, well, I think I have maybe a few um, places, uh, but I have some significant experiences in um, Media, Manchester. Oh. That's at our campsite, but it not necessarily during camp. I remember more than once um, being there and uh, I mean, literally just encounter the 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 presence of the Almighty God in a particular way, like a visitation from him. Uh, I remember during this time of um, when Chick V was rampant in Jamaica, had class uh, for Gordon Conway at the time and was in a room and I felt literally visited and spoken to by the Lord. Uh, how even be going to the Michael, I remember being at a in a room down there and uh, it, it is like the Lord spoke directly to me to say mm. okay start the mic now and by the Monday morning or afternoon whenever mm. I went to the mic did you know the, the, the checking out and signing up and stuff and one of the things that is significant to me the person that spoke to me in the in the office and I'm not sure if it's what happened but I, I don't see that young man again mm. I mean starting the program going to that office area never again because I was trying to find a very short program and he you know just convinced me because I just had in mind you know do some uh, like a diploma in teaching and so many other times that I encounter I remember also some years before in place in major in Manchester. Um, I think it perhaps was a minister's retreat and one of the ministers, you know, like we were in the room and he said, you know, who are you? Mm. And at the time when I, you know, when I checked and, you know, thought about some stuff, there are several things that I didn't have in place. And, you know, so that seemed like my little, my little better. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Just sharing a few. Wow, awesome. Just a few. You hear that? Just yeah. a few. And I'm trying to open the, the, the class a little bit more lesson. Then I'm sure most of us will come with with, with several. But I guess some, some other times we can share it among ourselves. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Bishop, for your input. Now, um, verse verse um looking at genesis 35 verse 1 to 4 and i'm just going to look at verse 3 and let us arise and go up 
and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Right? Okay, so in this ch um, chapter, we're looking at this story where Jake, when Jacob returned to Bethel, right? So there is a purification of the family of Jacob and the renewing of God's promises to Jacob. Now, you would understand that for Jacob to return to, to, to Bethel and to build an altar there, God instructions would have been very, very important, right? So, by the way, we realize that, no, that God had actually instructed Jacob to build an altar, right? So, what he says, arise. On verse 3, arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God. Now, the call to return to Bethel is very much significant. And this is for several reasons. All right? Um, one, it is a place of God's initial encounter with Jacob. Remember? The initial encounter with Jacob. The encounter occurred as he fled from Esau to Haran. So that was 20 years ago. And this, so when, you, when he fell asleep as a fugitive, tired, and he fell asleep and God, um, you know, um, met him in his, 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 his sleep, right, in his dream. And the second one, Bethel is where God established Jacob as the rightful heir to the Abrahamic covenant. And if you want to look more of that, look at um, chapter 20. 28. And the third one, the initial encounter with God at Bethel not only led Jacob to rename the place Bethel was originally called Luz, but also to make a profound declaration. The Lord, Yahweh, shall be my God. The Lord shall be my God. So also, in naming the place is a worshipful response to Jacob and, and Jacob's encounter with God. Jacob called the place Bethel, meaning house of God. Why? Because his, he experienced the powerful and tangible presence of God there. A face to face, you know, the man wrestle with God. Therefore, the place must surely be the dwelling place of God. And the fourth one, at Bethel, God promised to bring Jacob back to this land. Therefore, the command to return to Bethel fulfilled the promise God made. God not going to make a promise and don't fulfill it. You know. when, 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 when God told Rebecca um, that not Rebecca. Yes, it's Rebecca, Abraham's wife. Am I missing the name? That she's going to, to, to bear a child? She laughed. Is that, I feel like That's I'm missing. Abraham and Sarah. 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 Sarah, sorry, Sarah. Sarah laughed, right? So even though she laughed because she thought, okay, fine. What kind of promise going? God make it to me? Look at, look where, look at where I am in my life. But they, they they had a son, right? So if once God made a promise, he's going to keep his a promise keeper. It might not be instantly. It might not be this instant, nor tomorrow, nor next week. Look at it. When God promised Jacob, it's 20 years after before it was fulfilled. So sometimes we get so frustrated. Sometimes we don't think that, oh, hmm. It's going to happen. And so we want to do other things because 
you know, we can't stay so long because, you know, think the promise going to come through, but let's wait a little longer. Let me, let us be a little bit more patient and trust to God because his timing is not ours. And we may want it now, but God may not want you to have it now. Bethel fulfilled the promise God made. So the call to return to Bethel is followed by some form of purification, which includes what? Changing clothes and the removal of all idols. That's very significant. So when you change your clothes, what does that symbolize now? That symbolize what? The cleansing from impurities. How many times have you heard in the scripture where an encounter is made and somebody has to take off their shoes? Somebody has to change their clothes? Somebody has to go wash some, you know, wash feet, wash hands? Changes will take care of all, will, will, will initiate that sort of a, a, of a experience. So guess what? Changing clothes symbolizes cleansing from impurities. What impurities are we talking about? Remember, this man is a deceiver and the things that he would have done. You know the story when he was with his um uncle. Now, it is possible, according to the commentary here, that the purification ritual was required because the call to return to Bethel was preceded by the rape of Dinah. Dinah was Jacob's daughter. And not just, and as a result of the killing of, of, Dinah, of, of Dinah, Jacob's sons kill the men of Shechem. So their sister was raped, and so they went and they killed those men um, who, 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 who raped their sister who, or who was there and didn't prevent the rape, I would, um, would imagine. So instruction to remove all foreign gods might recall the gods that Rachel, right? Rachel was um, one of his wives, stole from her father's house. So, so we have baggage, right? And with the baggage and the filthy clothes and the dirty hands, we may not receive well the, the promise that God, that God has for us. So we have to unload. We have to get rid of the unwanted stuff. So you see all them things that she take from our father's house? Get rid of them. Purging the tribe of all idols points to the spiritual revival of Jacob and his household. You have to clean up. Once you're going God's way, you have to clean up. Get rid of all those. No matter the attachment, get rid of it because you have to go with him clean and empty of all those baggages. So the purpose for the purification is to prepare them for their return to Bethel. A return to the holy house of God requires renunciation of sinful behavior. You have to renounce all the wicked acts and all those beliefs and those things that you were involved in for those sinful behaviors. And it's idolatrous worship, the idol worshiping, all of that of a drop. So do all those things that they hold as truth, you have to go mash down that lie because it's only one truth. So building the altar is an act of worship to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. That I promise he made to him, I will be with you. And the Lord is saying to someone this afternoon, I promise you that I will be with you. So no matter the hurdles coming your way, faint not, hallelujah, because I am with you. Hold on to my promise. Stand on the promises of God. Stay under the shadow of the, the Almighty. That's where you are safe. So if you're going to say, boy, I can't bother this promise and I take too long and decide to come, get yourself out of the shadow of the Almighty, that's where you're going to be attacked and probably be killed because you have taken yourself out of the presence of the Lord. I don't know who wants to hear this today or who need to hear it, but stay under the shadow of the Almighty where you are safe. Stay and stand on the promises of 
God. Amen? When God encountered Jacob during this flight from Esau, God said to him, I am with you and you will and will keep you wherever you go. Amen? And Jacob can testify that God has kept his promise. Many of us can testify today that God has kept his promise with us because God has spoken to us through different ways and we have kept holding on and persevering in prayer and God has come through for us. So there are times when we have to clean up our household because there might be open doors. Things may happen and you are here praying and there's an open door. Somebody speaking and smoking the ganja. Somebody sneaking and watching porn. Somebody sneaking in and watching some, some, some movies that are not supposed to be watched because the invites are in the presence of, of, of demonic spirit. So sometimes we have to get radical and chase out and seal the doors so that God can take full control and bless our whole soul. We have to be in charge sometimes. When, as a matter of fact, we need to be in charge all the time and get rid of the situation, the open doors, close up and seal those doors so God can work within us. Amen? Amen. I'm still there. Okay. Amen. So, um, let me not jump to so Subject, submit to God. Um, Jacob builds an altar, right? As Jacob and his household journey back to Bethel, God's promise of protection manifests as a terror from God. Oh, because those surrounding cities would probably would have attacked them. But as I said, God promised protection manifests as a terror from God upon the surrounding cities. So when God promises something, all when you walk through, it's like the, the gun can't even move. The plan where them have can't be executed because God is in charge. And you know what? You have given God permission to protect you because he said, yeah, I'm going to protect you. You We need to give him permission to protect us. And how do we give him per permission to protect us? By being obedient. By being obedient. So once we start disobey him, we are saying, I don't want to protect on God. But once you start protecting, um, once you start to, to be obedient, that will happen. In, in Ezra, it says, if, if you're a worshiper, God's hand of protection will be upon you. Amen? Now, let us continue. Um. I think this point I highlighted that I want to share with you is that it says you have to note that the only time in Genesis that God commissions the construction of an altar was when he, he did that to Jacob and he instructed Jacob. So Jacob renames the place El Bethel which means God of Bethel, right? After making up that altar, he named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel. The new name underscores God of his house appeared here to Jacob in his time of distress. So some of us made us call, this is my prior room, or this is my new city. Or you name your place something because you know so when you enter there, so a war, you go war, right? So we are seeing that each step of the way, Jacob shows that, you know what, I'm not a deceiver anymore. God's promise has come through. And each time the promise has been fulfilled, there is a name change. His name was changed. The places he encounter, he named as well. Verse 8 is an unexpected note in the narrative because he reported the death of Rebecca. Who was Rebecca? 
Rebecca was um, the nurse. Uh, mother, Rebecca's nurse was Deborah. Deborah, Deborah Jacob's um, mother. Jacob's, go ahead, sis. I'm saying Rebecca was Jacob's mother. Jacob's mother and Deborah was the nurse. Yeah, his nurse. Jacob, yeah, Jacob's nurse. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca's nurse. Okay, so when he went there, and uh, it, it, I, I was looking too, and I realized that we never hear much of Rebecca. And here I'm looking into this this lesson, and he's saying that it, it, she was not mentioned after much after 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 that because the focus here was on how the the, the promise of the Lord is going to be fulfilled, and of from Abraham, because Abraham was promised that the, the land and the many descendants, you know, we sing the song, Father Abraham of many sons, many sons of Abraham. No, it's going through Jacob, right? So Jacob, so the emphasis is now placed on Jacob, all right? Okay, so if you were Jacob, if you were Jacob and you were told to go back to meet Esau, your brother, whom you have stolen his blessing, what would you think when even though God said you are to go back and he will protect you? How what would you think as a human being? Anybody care to share? Um, it's natural for one to feel afraid um, to return after, you know, all that deception and, and the rage that was in his brother's heart against him. But because God promised that he will be, he will protect him, I think you would have felt um, a bit more um, comfortable in making that journey backwards. Okay, thank you, Silverance, for sharing. So to go back to, I was talking about the, the names that um, Jacob gave. So when Deborah um, died, that place was also, the name was changed. And that was Alan Bakoff, which means Oak of Weeping. And you would have understand why Jacob would have been weeping so much at the death of Deborah. All right. Okay. So let's now go into the final segment. Or are we doing with time? Six final segment of our lesson. I'm going to wrap it up. So God appears to Jacob. And this is Genesis 35, verse 9 to 12. I'm going to ask you please to read the scripture in your in your own time please so god up god's appearance to jacob in the passage has two distinct purposes what are they so they are to reaffirm jacob's name and to confirm the validity of the abrahamic covenant with jacob all right now god promises to jacob is similar to Abraham's. Amen? And Amen. so this text is, is showing that the divine appearance is connected in different ways from God's initial appearance to Jacob in Bethel. So in Bethel, the first encounter was in a dream. And then the angels encounter him. And then he was the, the male figure that he wrestled with. Amen. So here God's appearance to Jacob in this passage to confirm. Yes, your name is not Jacob anymore. You are, you are no Israel.
However, God encounters with us are always deliberate. It's not by chance. It's always a planned thing. So if the Lord, say, Bishop is preaching and an encounter is going to happen there, a spiritual encounter will happen whether to pastor or to someone else. It's not, it's not by chance. It's not a, it's always deliberate because God uses his people to accomplish his work. And he wants to show up and he wants to show us what he wants. He wants to tell us something to do. He wants to tell us of different things in different ways. So the way you may encounter, you may have, okay, pastor may have had an encounter in one way. And then someone in England have another encounter. And it's the same thing the Lord, the same message the Lord is given. But God will is very strategic and he's deliberate and he, he will choose his way of doing things. And of course, we are all have we all have different personalities and we all have different social upbringing and all of that will take into place. So if he's going to talk to somebody who is a is a is a marine, a marine soldier, he's going to talk to him based on his is 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 um his way of living, his vocation. If he's going to talk to a doctor, he's going to talk to the doctor in his, his professional way. If he's going to talk to the farmer, so he's going to use things that are associated with what you do. Just like when he had those many fishermen, he'll talk about fish and the sea life. He talks about the farmer or he talks about the, 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 the person who's taking care of the, the animal. Right, so he uses, the, so he's, he's content language says so use content language all right to deal with certain situations amen amen content. anybody would like to share at this point before i go further based on what i said okay all right so in this divine encounter god begins by reminding Jacob that his name is now Israel. It is necessary for Jacob to accept this change because the new name signals a new identity for him. Amen? And his descendants. So all his offspring, and it means a lot to us today because we are a part of, of, that, of, of Jacob's lineage. The 12 sons of Israel, right, became the people of Israel. So you're talking about the tribes of Israel, of Israel is coming from Jacob, who is now called Israel. Amen? Amen. God, Amen. God, and again, to add to this, God identifies himself to Jacob as God Almighty. The name for God Almighty is El Shaddai. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. God Almighty. So when we say El Shaddai, we are lording our prayers and God Almighty, all powerful. The meaning of El Shaddai is, is um, according to the commentary, they are uncertain about that. But right now we know and we accept that the all-powerful, the mighty God is all-powerful God. Amen? El Shaddai is associated with God's promise that the descendants and nations will be unable to be numbered. You cannot number. They are numberless. And so we can identify the, 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 the promises of Abraham and the promises of, of, of Jacob, they, that they are the same and that Jacob is now fulfilling the promise that was set down from. Because remember that Jacob is coming from, uh, from Abraham. Jacob must be fruitful. Amen? Jacob must be fruitful. Jacob must multiply, multiply because his descendants will 
include kings, it will include nations. You will have a lot of kings coming from, from under Jacob. You're gonna get a lot of you're gonna get a lot of um, um nations coming from Jacob. And so we, we can't mistake this. The promise of God is sure. God makes no mistake when he's making his promise. His promise is a promise keeper. Abraham, he said, Abraham would be a father of many nations. Right? And Jacob descendants. Jacob descendants would have this promise would be given land. Will be given land. Amen. We can't forget that. He promised land. He promised nations. And that's what's going to happen. And it, it has been fulfilled. Amen. So the promise given to Abraham and Isaac is now extended to Jacob and Jacob descendants. The promise is given to you. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you. And I will give the land to your offspring after you. My father is rich in houses and land. So let's not sit down and suffer and say we don't have anything. We are his child, his children. I am a child of the king. I am a descendant of Israel. And so I have, I have access. And so we need to ensure that we have it. How can we have access? We need to be obedient. David said, I love thy precepts. Right? And let us and help us to abide by your precepts. He said, You have created, you have made us, you have created us. Help, help us, help me to abide by thy precepts. Our God is great. If you look at the screen at the bottom, our God is great. God is the great, God is the great reality. His resources are available and endless. His promises are real and glorious. Hold on to the promises of God. He's there for you. He promised that he's, he's the Israel offspring, the descendants will be blessed. And we will be blessed if we hold on to it. So we're on the last part of our lesson. Jacob pours out an offering, Genesis 35, verse 13 to 15. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him and even a pillar of stone and he poured out a drink offering thereon and he poured all thereon and Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Bethel. Bethel. When God finished speaking to Jacob, God went up from him. When God talked, him talk and him done. So let us take him at his word. Same thing he did to Abram when he spoke to Abram. God went up from Abram. When God finished speaking, him done and him gone up to and and he just left. So Jacob erects a pillar of stone and pours a drink of offering on the pillar as an act of worship. As an act of worship. What are we going to pour on today as an act of worship? What is it as Christians we're going to do when there is an encounter, when there's something happening and we want to worship? What do we do? Because we, we have access to grace every day. New morning, new mercies we receive. How do we worship? What's that all act of worship? Is it just standing up and shouting hallelujah? What are the different forms of worship? How do we worship the Lord? Finally, just as God renewed his name, Jacob renewed the name of the place he experienced God's divine presence and promises as Bethel. Genesis 35 verse 1 to 15 would have taught us that worship includes renunciation. So you, you cut ties of certain things. Right, certain beliefs, certain actions, certain behavior, and renewal 
So you, you change over. You bring yourself to a new man. Old person, old, old body's gone. I'm a new creation. And revival. Bethel is the appropriate place for this experience of worship. Are we invited now to go to our Bethel? If we don't have a Bethel, you're invited to have your Bethel. Are you longing for an encounter with the Almighty? Are you, are you thirsty enough to find a new way in which God can, can, can speak to you? What do we do as Christians? What sort of offerings should we pour out to God today? Today is the end, the, at this point is the end of today. When we would have pondered over today, evaluated today, what are we going to pour on the altar? And a matter of fact, what altar do we have? What altar are we focusing on? Let us find an altar. This lesson is telling us, let us as Christians offer, pour out, sacrifice some time, some effort, and worship God. Indeed, if we worship him, his hand of protection will be upon us. There's a little section I want you to look at, submission to God's will. And if it was Zoom, I would have asked all of us to read. But may I just ask one person to just read this, please. Just the first paragraph. Can somebody just read for me? Are you able to see my screen well and to read it for me? No? I will try. Thank you so very much. Okay. It says submission challenges our innate need for independence and control. However, refusing to submit to God is a willful act of rebellion that will lead to separation from his blessings. Submission therefore requires us to be utterly obedient to God. Jesus's life on earth was a perfect expression of submission to the Father's will. Although he was God in human flesh, Jesus humbled himself by, coming, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Philippians 2 verse 8. Because he submitted to the will of the Father, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is higher and more excellent than any other name. Therefore, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Today, as followers of Christ, we must joyfully submit our lives to the will of God. Amen. Thank you so very much. There are so many things to take away from this paragraph, but there's one thing I'm going to point out. Jesus is set an example for us. And if his name can be changed, right? If his name is, is higher and more excellent than any other name, what do you think as children, as followers of Christ, children of the way, would you not think that we'll, ha we'll have access to that great and lovely things ahead of us? Do you think that, that we will enjoy the promises, these promises of God will be fulfilled in our lives? All of us, just remember that in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. As Christians, let us not say we did not hear the word. 
There is a Sunday school. There is a prayer meetings. There is a, the, the Bible studies. There is a, the, the word given on, on Sundays and other nights and so on. Let us submit our lives to the will of God and allow him. Let us continue to persevere without persevering. You notice Jacob fought with, 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 with God and he was blessed. God patiently draws sinners to repentance and submission. He's very patient, but he's not going to be patient forever. One day he's going to be the judge. Just remember that we are to observe that God blesses those who submit to him and resolve to serve him wholeheartedly. You want to be blessed by God, then we must submit ourselves to him. If you're unsaved and you're hearing our lesson this afternoon, be haste and get yourself involved and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior because the coming of the Lord is nearer than we can ever think. God bless you. Thanks for having me in another Sunday school. And I hope your hearts are blessed and you have learned and that we are going to share what we have learned. God bless you. Over to you, Sister Marvel. Thank you so very much, Sister Morgan. Put your hands together for our teacher. Let us show some love and appreciation. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, so very much, Sister Morgan, yeah. for delivering the, the lesson um, this afternoon, this evening, to be exact. We are truly blessed. And um, I do not want to close off without giving at least one person an opportunity to share what they have learned. You know, as a topic says, God blesses Jacob. God, Jacob wrestle with God. Jacob submit to God. And the Abrahamic covenant reaffirmed, you know, time didn't allow her to go into that third part of the lesson. But I'm sure you would have learned something this afternoon. So I will want I, I want to give one person an opportunity to share what you have learned. Don't be too shy, don't be shy. Good night, everyone. Good night, Sister Dad. Ah, what I learned, I like the lesson outline, which says, God patiently draws sinners to repentance and submission. After 20 years, Jacob's conscience still pricked him to go and reconcile with his brother. And I look at it and I says, he lay on his own understanding for 20 years, but after he comes to a realization, he, the golden text says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Because I, I, I realize I, did, I didn't even realize it was that long that he tricked his brother and went away. But after these years, he, God spared him that he could be able to go back to get to reconcile with his brother. And God waited patiently for us to reconcile from our sins and repent. Bless the Lord. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, Sister Dubidad, for sharing. You know, um, and I I agree with you. And there are so many things I took from it too. You know, um, looking at Jacob, who is a is a sinner, a sinner like any one of one of us when we were sinners. You know, before we came, before we got the new name, Christian. <laughs> I don't know if we recognize that we got a new name. Amen. When we change and turn, you know, from our wicked ways and accepted the Lord as our Savior. We got a new name. And uh, Jacob, you know, 
was just like any one of us as as sinners, because some of us, you know, uh, and and we will we will classify sins and put them in different categories and say this one worse than that one, and so forth. But all are sin. Sin, yeah, our sin is sin. All sin is sin. You know, we as 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 human, we 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 put sin in different categories. Yeah. You know, yeah. and degrees and so forth. So yes, Jacob was a sinner. He was a trickster, you know, a real trickster, trickerly uncle when he went. Yeah. To stay with his uncle, he tricked him there as well. And his uncle was a trickster too. So it was in the family, you know. But the good thing is that just like Jacob, just like us, right? We had an encounter with God one way or another. We had an encounter, right? And that encounter he submitted to. Because sometimes the Lord, there's an encounter, you know, sometimes the Lord is pricking us, you know, sometimes the Lord send a word, sometimes the Lord speak to us directly and we resist, right? He submitted, and because of his submission, he was able to receive the blessings that God had in store for him, his family, generations to come, and out of his line, right? As God had promised his grandfather Abraham, right? Um, the, 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 the promises that he gave him that he shall be blessed, and that, you know, um, out of his loins shall come kings and you know and 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 so forth um he was able to get that blessing and not just blessing of of um of 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 children and grandchildren but also he got um other blessings right riches right um that god bestowed on him land and and other things Right, so God is able to do all things, and He will bless us if we are only faithful, true, and willing to submit. Right, submit to God. Many of us wrestle with God, and we wrestle, but we don't submit. We so just true. keep fighting, fighting. A lot of us, right, wrestle with God daily. Right, God is is. Um, pushing us in a particular path, right? Um, giving us specific instruction, warning, etc. And a lot of us wrestle and don't give in, right? And some of us, the wrestling is not for a blessing. The wrestling is to to be disobedient, right? In this particular case, his wrestle was to be blessed. So when we wrestle with God, let it be one way we are wrestling to be blessed and not wrestling to be cursed. All right? Amen. 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 So that's what I get, get from the lesson tonight. And I'm sure, you know, you all have gotten something from it. And I pray that we will, you know, continue to be a part of these sessions where the word of God is, is, is broken down for us, right? And so that we can learn. And may we apply these words to our lives so that we can be um, the Christian that the Lord wants us to be. So thank you so very much, Sir Dubidad, for sharing. And I know that there are many others who want to share. But um, due to time... I will, will not ask you to do so, but I would want to ask an individual to pray the closing prayer for us. Um, may I ask Sister, see Sister Gloria Preston online with us tonight. Sister Preston, may I ask you to close with a short word of prayer. Almighty God, oh, ruler of heaven and earth. And Lord, it's been a time, Lord, that I want to be on the Sunday school. 
uh, I'm never even sure of what was happening, but thank God I am here. I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you for the teacher. I thank you, Lord, for every ear that is listening to your holy words. I heard my past as well when I could. And Lord Jesus, our superintendent, and those at hands and share, Lord, I just ask you to help us that we will continue to listen to your words. We cannot have enough of it. And so, God, as we bring our attention, oh, God, I ask you, God, that we will be stimulated through them and to gradually to bear our circumstances that we go through day to day, whether it is good, bad, or it is indifferent, that we can bring the minds of others to you, Lord, to the fold of righteousness, especially in times as this. Lord, as Joseph, uh, Jacob wrestled, wrestled with you until daylight, you would not let go. Mighty God, help us to hold on to that which we can, to hold on to your unchanging hands. Lord, there is no other way out but the way, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have trod, trod, Lord God, so that we can follow. Father, hear us. Have mercy, Lord, upon the young minds, the older people, each and every one, even the teachers, each and one of us, Lord, need more of you. And so, God, I thank you for the supply this evening as I get a little bit of it here and there. I pray, God, you'll be glorified, Lord Jesus, if you can. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth, name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Prince. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I see our bishop online. Um, we didn't see you today, past Bishop, you know, and we are we consider ourselves blessed to have you on the platform again. Um, and so I will not close off without giving you an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to us. Thank so. you very much, Sister White, and good night, Sunday school class, and of course, I mean, uh, uh Big tick to our Sunday school teacher this evening, Sister Morgan. Another okay. excellent delivery. Thank you so very much for availing yourself. And uh, uh, such a pleasure and privilege to, you know, to be in Sunday school class. For me, you know, the word you know, is very, very, very important. And as Sister White said, uh, didn't see, she didn't see me today. <laughs> well, by the time I left, um, this morning, then you weren't um, there, and then by the time I got back, you had already left. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, right, yes. But there's a, a, a new church that is added to the church. I got a prophecy uh, that's um, Smith Lane. Um, it's near North Street, and so today was the official receiving in of that um, church. Uh, uh, 34 persons received the right hand of fellowship and so we did that official uh, Bishop, Le Bishop Leet and Bishop Daly and uh, the zone coordinator of zone one, Pastor Mayor and myself, along with um, Pastor Sanders, was, was very good. Very good. God bless you, class. And, uh, you know, for me, I look forward to, to being in Sunday school with well, all, all, all the modes. Face to face, WhatsApp, um, Zoom, you know, and I encourage us to, to keep it up. And God bless you. Have a great one. Thank you, Mika. Thank you very much. Thank very you, much. everyone, for being here. And um, we invite you to be here next week, same time on the same platform, 6 p.m. And we'll be looking at Joseph's story. Joseph is one of the um, Jacob's son, right? Same Jacob who was promised to be blessed, what? and we know the story of Joseph, right? Um, so we will be exploring that um next week. Jacob's story. You can read well um in preparation for that lesson, Genesis mm -hmm. chapter thirty-seven. Just read all of it from verse one to the end, and come charge up to ask your questions and to share what you understand.
God bless you, everyone. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful week. And remember, God, bless you. Good night. God wherever you are and in all that you do. Bless you too. May his peace be with you until we meet again.